We're here at the 22nd Croy. We're here with James Kublin, who is the executive director of the Vaccine Trials Network based at the Fred Hutch Center. My name is Fred Scheich. I'm with IFARA, and we welcome you to the program. We want to cover some things that are important for our community to know uh, about vaccines and about what we have now. So lead off with that. Well, thanks very much, Fred, for uh, inviting me to, to speak to you and, and to the general public. Uh, who are interested in these issues. And, and I think you know one of the major messages that we want to continue to communicate and remind people of is the tremendous importance and severity of the HIV pandemic. And, and that, uh, that the severity of, of the pandemic continues, the importance of, of HIV awareness um, that your uh, tremendous efforts are, are devoted to is, is something that we need to continue to remind not just the general community, but even the medical community, medical providers, HIV continues to be a major problem here in the U.S. and, and globally. Mm -hmm. And the, the work that you do is further down the line. It's, it's the, the long haul, as you said. Can you right. address that? So there are prevention interventions that are available now, and there's been, of course, tremendous progress in the past couple de decades with regard to the treatment of HIV. But with new, each new HIV infection, there's an enormous burden to provide treatment and care to those individuals. So we know that for such a sexually transmitted infection as HIV, as it is predominantly transmitted, the only way to really control this is with an HIV vaccine. And we're making, I think, great strides toward that. In the intermediate period, we're going to continue to have to develop new and, and other prevention um, efforts that, um, that will be available for different communities. And uh, there's been some exciting progress with regard to these other prevention interventions uh, here presented at CROI. Mm -hmm. But for me, the longer term effort and my day-to-day -day effort is really at um, directing these HIV vaccine trials so that we can collect the necessary inform information to eventually have a globally effective HIV vaccine. Mm -hmm. I think Mitchell Warren says it very eloquently in that, you know, we have a, a large armamentarium. We don't want to take anything away from it. We want to add to it and keep on expanding it so that people can pull the tools that are right for them. We see some trials that, that fail because of the uh, unacceptability of, uh, of the, the, the gels or whatever it is for microbicides. But we move on and we to figure out, is there a way to make this work still? Or do we have to try something else? Or is there an application that can work better? So always improving. We wouldn't be, there's no point in, in having these conferences. I mean, we have to have conferences to, to learn every year that's gonna be changing. Mm -hmm. Nothing is static, absolutely nothing is static. And we try not to throw anything out because there's always this possibility that there's a small percent of the population make use of certain aspects of prevention. Mm -hmm. But um, the work that's being done in vaccines has been slow. And, and it's appropriate, I guess, that it is because it's even in the early days, there was the envelope uh, proteins that were worked on. In the, and, uh, and every time people genuinely felt that they had a win and dashed. You know, we had this, we used to call it the roller coaster. We, you know, we're going up there, ah, oh, and, no. uh, yeah. and then we just go down and crash. So, but um, we try to limit the frustration and the disappointment and say it's, we learned something. Right. And even when you talk to people like uh, Tim Henrich from Boston with the two Boston patients, they almost thought they had it. Mm -hmm. And then there's a little bit of virus hiding out somewhere. Right. So we really, for all those reasons, we need to be working on the long haul. And um, can you tell about how your network is? I mean, it's pretty broad, but like I say, based in Fred Hutch, right here in Seattle. Right, right here in Seattle. And um, it's the largest globally um, directed network toward uh, the development of an HIV vaccine. We also have based here in Seattle, our lab center and our stats data management center. So it really is, the uh, entire mechanism necessary to drive the development of an HIV vaccine, mm -hmm. and really to drive the scientific advances that are necessary to ultimately have a vaccine for, uh, for different populations. Mm -hmm. You know, adherence, you mentioned, is, has been a challenge with regard to some of the other prevention interventions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a single jab in the arm, of course, is the ideal mm -hmm. um, vaccine intervention. 
we're likely to have uh, regimens that are more complex, perhaps prime boost combinations of mm -hmm. vaccines that are multiple regimens for these initial um, steps. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, we're, we're, we've just launched uh, last week, there was a, a press release from NIH about HVTN 100, which is mm -hmm. a, a large phase one trial in South Africa that will begin a process of conducting over a dozen, uh, evaluating over a do dozen different combinations of vaccines mm -hmm. from which we'll then move on to larger efficacy trials in the next mm -hmm. couple of years. And we're talking about preventative vaccines. That's right. There is something such as, or conceptually, uh, as a therapeutic mm -hmm. vaccine. Uh, that would be a goal. Mm -hmm. And maybe uh, a cure, right. a combo of something of a vaccine and maybe some treatment, mm -hmm. and something to flush the, the virus out of the cells. So the, the cure could include a it therapeutic could've, vaccine. Could've, I, mean, I, th I thought there right. was some research or some presentation on that at mm -hmm. the Melbourne conference. That's right. Immunotherapy, yeah. um, as, as it's called within the cancer field, mm -hmm. um, therapeutic vaccination for um, a a HIV. And um, there is progress in that area. I think um, we're, we're directed more specifically toward a preventive, preventive yeah. HIV vaccine. And of course, that's, that's really the, the goal of uh, the HVTN. Do you have collaborators beyond the network that you described, that you identified with? Right. right. We have a, a global uh, network of sites and investigators and collaborators that we work with, mm -hmm. and hvtn.org is our website. We also welcome input from community and, and other researchers who may not be directly involved with mm -hmm. the HVTN um, to provide access to data or samples, ancillary studies that they may be interested in from the clinical trials that we've conducted in the past. And so we consider ourselves a, a, a global resource for the community at large, whether it be community advocates, you know, basic science researchers, clinical trialists, to advance the field of HIV vaccines. And physically and operationally, mm -hmm. it's daunting imagining to put together a site or a whole series of sites mm -hmm. across the country or across the world. Um, and we've talked about that, trying to make, when we have a, a trial that goes forward and then it either is shut down early or it, it comes to fruition, to lose that connection and that established infrastructure, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. medical and, and clinical infrastructure for the trial. How do you, how do, you do that? Is it, it must be a little mm -hmm. bit of magic to get people to hang on and say, we may have another trial coming down the line. Right. We'd like to initiate it quickly and not have to rebuild something from scratch. Right. Well, that I think is, is the philosophy behind having the HVTN in the first place, which is we can't, you know, HIV vaccines are, are a unique, um, er, it's, it's a very unique area mm -hmm. um, with regard to the, the clinical trial designs, the community engagement that's necessary. The altruism. The, yeah. the you know, volunteers who may participate mm -hmm. simply because um, they know someone who passed away from HIV back in 88. Um, and there's a tremendous motivation, altruism, mm -hmm. behind um, many of the volunteers who participate. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the, the greatest honor, really, for me is to be able to work with these communities. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they're donating their, their, literally their bodies to these clinical trials. Mm -hmm. We collect a lot of blood samples and tissue samples and biopsies to really understand how these vaccines are working and how they may prevent HIV in the future. So um, it's one of the greatest opportunities as, um, as the you know, leader of this network mm -hmm. to engage with those communities and the investigators from these different sites. Mm -hmm so that the, the infrastructure is maintained at these sites, uh, predominantly by NIH and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And, um, and they're, they're very well prepared to launch these clinical trials that we have slated for the coming uh, 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. And the, the work that you do in that area, do you have a lot of, um, uh, do you have the community input groups or Community advisory boards. That's right. Community advisory boards, mm -hmm. both locally within each of our study sites and the and the surrounding communities, mm -hmm. and then a global cab that mm -hmm. um, 
uh, from which we have representation from all of the regions of the world that can provide input on, on our scientific agenda and most importantly how we engage with the communities who are uh, mm -hmm. most affected by HIV mm -hmm. and who also may be the best um, participants in our clinical trials. Jim, thank you very much for your time. I, I think that maybe now we've had a little better understanding of how this works and our audience will probably have this, uh, maybe questions or something, and we may refer them to you. Sure, I welcome them. Yeah. And, uh, and if, if there's any engagement that needs to happen, we'll make the connections. Great. Thanks thank very you very much, much Jim. Yeah.